Hi everyone, I'm Russ Hamilton. I'm a retired sergeant with California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation. Hey there, TikTok fans. Russ Hamilton here. Uh, Anthony asked me to do a quick little snippet on, of course, what's been going on in the news today. You can't miss it anywhere you go. Epstein, Epstein, Epstein. And this uh, thing that happened with him committing suicide while he was under watch, under guard, in the uh, federal correction system. So, having said all that, um, let's just take this apart um, from the way it stands at first glance. Um, so, at first glance, uh, you have a suicide, and that in and of itself does not necessarily reflect bad on staff or on policy or any other thing. There is a limit to the amount of things that you can do to control and prevent suicides. Now, am I saying that uh, everything is free and clear in this instant? Absolutely not. Um, you know, there's a lot of question marks that are hanging in the air, and we have yet to see how each and every one of those plays out. It could very well be that staff are at fault in this, but we're not going to make those assertions, and we're not going to make those assumptions until we know more. What we can put forth and put out there, though, is our own experiences that we've had in corrections up to this point that point to where the potential weak links are. And that is certainly of concern. What did staff do on that day? So when I say that uh, staff aren't necessarily going to be held accountable for this, that is if they did everything correctly. It only takes an inmate about four to six minutes to kill themselves. Um, you know, if they're going to go by the typical, you know, strangulation, hanging themselves, leaning forward, whatever it is that they've decided to do that's going to cut off either the blood supply and or the air supply. So we know that, four to six minutes. So if you're on 30-minute checks, 40-minute checks, 60-minute checks, whatever it is, that is, out, that is out of your hands. There, There's no way to prevent that under that particular scenario. So what's going to happen with these particular officers, and this is going to be this is going to be the worst experience of their lives going under the microscope like this. And, and I feel for them. And I hope that they had all their ducks in a row and they're ready to answer those hard questions. So what it comes down to then is, did they do their checks? And if they didn't, why? Were they just lazy? Did they not do them? Or was there some other factor, some other thing that prevented them or slowed them down during it? Now, one thing that's been brought up, of course, is whether or not this particular unit or this particular uh, facility was fully, fully staffed. So anyway, that um, that is really what's going to you know play out and may give them some cover, may not. Like I say, question marks still in the air. So if they weren't fully staffed and they couldn't get around to all those checks in time, when was the first check that they completed after they took over on that watch? You know, there's just no way to know. So going back to uh, whether or not they made their checks at all, um, I unfortunately have seen that happen in corrections where staff got lazy or complacent. And in that complacency and laziness, they failed to do the check and ended up having a suicide. Now, whether it was preventable or not, We'll never know because they didn't do their assigned checks at the assigned time. If they had done those and the suicide went ahead and happened anyway, they would be in the free and clear because they did what they were supposed to do according to policy, according to procedure. Once again, now they have no way of proving, you know, that it would have made any difference anyway. And in uh, one of the instances I know about this particular in individual and another individual ended up getting fired. So anyway, um, that's just basically some food for thought, and uh, I hope that uh, you take this under submission, under consideration. Guys, do your checks. You know, the human factor is always the weakest link in corrections, and it doesn't have to be that way. Um, you know, this is one of the reasons that many corrections departments have adopted a whole host of electronic monitoring in order to get away from our human frailties. They put you in a position where you have to be there with that monitoring wand at that door, checking it in that instant. And that's a good thing because it actually does help. It does help protect us. 
and it, and it gives us an, an incentive to, to make those rounds and stuff. But I'm telling you, man, follow policy, follow procedure. I hope things work out for these guys there. I hope it wasn't, I hope it wasn't their fault. Um, and like I say, and I just want to go back, not casting aspersions anywhere. We're just looking at where those weak links could have been in this instance. All right, everyone, take care. Stay safe. Russ Hamilton here signing off. Mm -hmm.